I think every Eagles fan will remember where they were the night that Luke Shuey put through a goal after the siren in extra time on the road to sink the power and advance to the final six. One of the most unbelievable finishes to a game of footy you're ever going to see. Welcome to Eagle Review, Ben Roberts. I know you were looking forward to this one. Plenty to get stuck into. You wouldn't want to have it in anyone else's hands, I don't think. Josh Kennedy, maybe a couple of Coleman says, you can take that shot. Hearn, possibly. Mm. But the cheeky smile, I think Luke Shuey knew this was well within his capabilities. Yeah, absolutely. He has got a beautiful kicking motion, Luke Shuey, and uh, one of the best kicks in the team, as we know. Comfortable. A uh, little smirk was uh, quite humorous. And then, uh, like everyone, was holding their breath still, not knowing what was going to happen, but slotted it and uh, scenes at the uh, Adelaide Oval uh, wasn't totally Eagles way in terms of the crowd, so they weren't overly impressed. Well, certainly not as impressed as we were and the coaches' box were and the boys and everyone from the West Coast Eagles contingent, but it was bloody exciting. What a game. Were you happy that the AFL came out and said that free kick is okie dokie, no problems there, or did you even need to hear that in your mind? From where the umpires were, if you look at it, two of them were going to pay it as well, so two out of the three uh, that were looking in control, so um, a very hard one, but... Either way, it was going to be an unhappy bunch of fans and a very, very happy bunch of fans. It was also fun to see how Nick Nananui watched the final moments from his house. Just took his... it pretty easy and, um, you know, didn't, didn't go over the top. Him just had a couple of friends over, a couple of cups of tea and just took it all in. and um... Watched it from his ridiculously cheap and real shoddy theatre room in his house. Yeah, Gee, exactly. you'd hate to watch most sporting events there in your calendar year. Uh, the boys got off to the unbelievable start, which was crucial when you're on the road, especially in a final against a quality team but jumped out to a first quarter lead. How's this one, the last 10 straight first quarters in our home and away fixturing and the final? That's unreal. On the back of Darling's first half, he was outrageous. Oh, he? Mitchell, most disposals from any player in a finals career, which is an unbelievable stat when Another you think about it. Another record broken by Sam. He's broken a few this year. Uh, Darling was tremendous. Uh, they came uh, switched on. They liked that... Uh, what that song they play at the start of the game? Never tear us apart. Yeah, they, the, our boys get off on that as much as the port guys do, I reckon. And it's a, like it's good. It's pretty cool when all the fans go berserk when um, when it starts. But I reckon our boys love it as much as they do, and they always uh, play well there, as we know. And uh, that's uh, six out of seven at the Adelaide Oval. Very fair point. But when Port started to come, we knew they were going to flip yep. the switch at some stage. They are too good a team not to have done that on the moment. Yep. They slammed through six straight and two in the last quarter. When I think most Eagles fans thought, "Wow." This is big trouble. Yeah, so 31 points up uh, midway through the second. You thought if you can just continue this momentum to half time, that may take the wind out of the sails. They were still going to come at some stage, we know. But they kicked the, the last couple of the second quarter and then kick, they kicked six straight, I think. And that was off the back of dominance with um, inside 50s, obviously, and, just, and possession. Like they owned the game for a very, very long time and probably just didn't kick straight in the end. Uh, in terms of their dominance. We, at the start, made the most of when we had control and then Port had control for a huge period. I don't think we kicked a goal for over two quarters. But when we came back at the end, they kicked straight as well and um, got the chockies. As is always the case with these close games, it's always fun to go and reflect on some of those last ditch moments and go and look back and the what ifs, I guess. The Eric McKenzie oh. slamming into the post moment. Oh. For the, you know, to prevent the rush behind. I think everyone's forgotten that he dropped the mark as well. But... I... So I was in the race looking at Eric and I thought, when, as soon as it was kicked, I said, he's not going to be able to mark that, it's too far. But then stood up, realised what was going on, that's football smarts, knew what was going on. If you try and rush it behind and miss and it goes out of bounds, it's deliberate, forget about it. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a mistake, genuine mistake. If you rush it out, he's getting done. What, what was funny is he, he thought he threw the ball into the post or slammed into it, which he did, but, yes. the, but the boundary umpire didn't pay that. Yes. And he was waiting for Eric to casually push this ball over the line. Therefore, which was deliberate. Once he, he, the, he was at a stop and then shoved the ball out, that's deliberate out of bounds. Absolutely. But the, um, although it hit the post and should have been out at uh -huh. the start, it wasn't called out, as you say. Yeah, and you can't review that either, so yeah, well, geez, that would have been a tough ending. Yep. I thought Travis Boat was going to pull out the goal of the year in terms of how difficult this kick was and situational you know, relevance, that was going to be the best goal of all. And it turned out to be the last score in regulation. Yes. It would have been an absolute heartbreaker for the Eagles to go down that way. A game of inches all night for sure. Uh, what about uh, Sheed late in the piece? Because you were behind that kick, weren't you? Right behind that kick. And I thought, my goodness, he's going to snap the best banana goal of all time and seal the win. And it, he shanked it off the instep. If that goes in for a point, we lose. Because mm. Paul get the ball back. Absolutely. So thankfully, he shanked it off the instep and it went out of bounds. And you all know what happened next. Mm, exactly. I think Shannon Hearn deserves a lot of praise as well. The ball that Luke Shuey... So Shui, glad you're bringing this. Uh, the ball that Luke Shuey switched to him as centre-half back, he's had to have a big contest in front of 
Who was it there? Need. Need. And as Shuey said, mate, you, he's a foot and a half tall than Need. He should have had no problem anyway. Nothing to worry about. But wow, Luke Shuey had some confidence to switch that. Talk ball. about Sh yeah, composure from uh, Shuey late in the piece with the kick. But the composure to ignore the bloke in front of you, waving his arms and that, and to keep it in, like to make sure it stays in front. And keep the feet. And keep the feet mm. and get it and then go forward. Got us inside 50. And, as we know the rest of history. What so. about the gaff deliberate call, mate? Because I think Simo was about to hit his head on the box as he's jumped up to him disbelief for that one. I was standing in the race, as I've said a few times, and there was a couple of Eagles staff around me. They were going more spare than Simo, let me tell you, at that decision. I actually missed the kick. I don't know what I was looking at. Probably avoiding, Another game going on, avo it? avoiding this, the sprays from the Port Adelaide people hanging over the fence. Um, but yeah, they weren't happy with it from West Coast point of view. But geez, they're tough. But you know, they, they go they go either way. It was line ball that one. The Charlie Dixon misses. He had one sensational game. I thought he did his abso shreds. absolute ripping mark and extra time. I thought that was going to be the end of the game. Yep. But obviously, he's missed that one. He's gone into three goals six and yep. just two in extra time. Yes. And I think he'll be you know very heavy on uh, on the heart. Not his fault because they wouldn't have been in that position without him. He uh, he probably well he got on top of Eric McKenzie all night. A couple of moments. He won't like, but he can look back, you know, I'm sure once uh, he processes it all, but uh, geez, he delivered on the final stage. First final and absolutely crushed it. Big night for the goal review system as well. We've yep. obviously got Chad Wingard's apparent touch off the boot from Gov. That was a tough one to call. And then Vardy's long snap that bounced like a Shane Warne wrong and it's gone yeah. in off Pittard's elbow or sleeve or whatever it was. Both decisions going against the Eagles, but you really can't have a problem with this. They were just too tough to call. According to the rules, if a hand is placed, if the ball is being touched at the same time as a foot, it's a point. Now, people will say, oh, but the touch left the boot and then it left the boot, but you can't kick the ball twice. So it, the, technically, they were both touched. The JK one I'm referring to as well, that was touched according to the rules. They didn't refer to that one. Uh, but uh, the two earlier, as you say, Vardy was the other one. That was just one of those ones. I mean, you can go on about these decisions, but like, it's just, they just happen. They're 50-50s. The umpire makes it cool. They're any human. You can't. Just, I don't like talking about decisions, then. So. <laughs> Just unbelievable scenes when you think about the three champions of the game, Matt Prittis, Sam Mitchell, Drew Petrie, all on the brink of retiring and having their last game of footy. And then to have the two games back-to-back -back they've had have been one, two of the most unforgettable, unbelievable moments for two different reasons. Yeah. And just unbelievable when you think about that. But the most pleasing aspect from an Eagles point of view is their two wins where Josh Kennedy hasn't played at his electrifying best. Yep. I mean, he was he was sensational in extra time, don't get me wrong, he was a big reason why they've got up in the end, but real pleasing thing, result when you're not having such reliance on the dual column. Yep, absolutely. Found some other avenues to go on, a few from different people, and um, I mean, the thing with JK, yeah, he kicked one goal during the game, but he kicked two, as you say, in extra time when there was a fifth quarter in this game and he got two straight, Dixon kicked 0-2. That's nothing against Charlie Dixon, but I'm just saying he had a big impact late in the piece and was um, big. He even said yesterday that uh, he got beaten, was pretty quiet, but good honest assessment from Josh. Oh, he, he actually had some great words of advice of how he could improve uh, next week as well. Try and play better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty spot on, in my yeah. opinion. Uh, looking really, really deep into the Dells for the uh, self-assessment there and uh, very analytical response. So I like it. He's no doubt going to bounce back this week. Excellent. The ruck stock. Shit, this was going to be a big battle heading in, and it was monstrous. Paddy Ryder, All-Australian, and he's towed us up in the both occasions in 2015 in 2017 home and away games, but the boys have had an unbelievable team performance to rally and get on top in a lot of areas. Yeah, and he didn't have that, do like he, he won the hit outs, but he didn't have that dominance around the ground. That's where he really crushed us, I reckon. He hit a couple of goals, um, especially in the second time we played them, and a lot of marks, and he was just everywhere. And they, they just played him really well. Like they evened a lot of the contests. We won the clearances, so the guys on the ground did their job. Didn't allow his dominance to become port dominance, but then, our ruck guys really worked him over on the ground after the clearances and I think that went a bloody long way of winning. They did a fantastic job and had huge involvement. So, I mean, Drew Petrie kicked a couple of snags, Vardy set up JK. Oh, time. mate, the, the spoil from behind when you're out of position against their ruckman, to spoil it the direction where the ball yeah. is coming to is incredibly to hard. bounce up oh. quicker, yeah. second effort. Break the tackle, sidestep if you don't mind, and then hit Jake. It was more important than his winning goal against yeah, the Dogs. Absolutely. Tremendous. All right, roast of the round time. Let's get to it. Aim on. That was reminiscent of one of my tee shots with Driver. That's just munged out on the full. Andrew Gaff came last in the West Coast Eagles FIFA tournament just recently. I think he carried a lot of those soccer skills over 
to the game on Saturday night. He really struggled for some purchase off the right He lined boot. it up from about 50 metres away. And, and on his right boot. Yeah, too. just didn't sit up for the big fella. Confidence was high. Uh, Redden, uh, geez, they're loud and you can forgive him. A little bit more talk from Pritter would have liked. You're going to uh, throw Pritter under the bus No, I'm here. just saying he was right there. He might have been talking and Redden might be... I don't know who to give the roast to because I wasn't there, but either Pritter didn't talk... Or he did talk and Redden didn't listen. That's a good Quinella for So me. I don't know who to give it to, so I'll give them both a little bit of roast each. Sweet. What about the rider ruck decision? Wasn't that a bit strange? When Tommy Sheed's allowed and they've gone, yeah, Tommy Sheed seems like the only ruckman. In when a situation going to ever arise where Dom Sheed's the only one to nominate Very unlucky. For a ruck? If you look at the uh, vision, the umpire looks around and rider does raise the arm, but the umpire just, the peripheral vision's not there from the umpire, unfortunately. Doesn't quite uh, see him and uh, the rest is history. Uh, it'll be looked at at the end of the year. For yeah, sure. unfortunate. MP, uh, MP's drop here, that's an absolute soda. Gee, what about Chad Wingard? So this Twice. Is, yeah, this is a moment where all they need to do is find a target they get a mark here, they'd probably wind the clock down and win the game. So, plays on with advantage, shouldn't have done that. Turns it over to Tommy B with a minute 30 remaining. Has he learned from his lesson? No, <laughs> no he hasn't, because he's gone down the line again with a minute 12, 18 seconds after. Gov, spoiled, don't know what he's doing. What I thought, that I, when that happened, I thought, that's it. We've, we've now lost, not it's Gov's fault, but when I saw that, I thought, oh, bugger. That's, uh, that could be it. But yeah. all had Chad had to do was hit a target and it was over. Yep. Couldn't do it. What else we got? Uh, Mitchell, uh, he is one of the best kicks off both feet. That is, I reckon, top three worst kicks of his career and cost us a goal. So there's a little roast for him. Not No uh, qualms doing that one. Yeah, and then Brad Shepard's had a bit of a tumble and turn as well. It's cost him uh, a major. Oh, I could, you could see that one coming a mile away mm -hmm. as well. Just uh, too quick for his own good Sheppy. Was he guarding both greys this time, was he? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to uh, and failing on that occasion. Uh, Cripper. Speaking of failing. Yeah, um, had, a, had a pretty, he got a oh, piece mate, of it. When you kick it 70 metres after the siren, you're pretty proud of it. You got a pretty good piece of it. When you think you're going to nail it from 80, yeah. give me a it's spell. one of those ones where you go, I know I have to have a shot here with an extra time. Imagine if I get it. But if I don't, if I just go, I'm not kicking that far, you'll get bait. Mm. Got to have a crack at it and embarrass yourself. Correct. Uh, Luke Shuey stitching up his old housemate here. Brad Ebert just tucking it in there and tricking the umpire into a hole in the ball. Love it. Bit of banter there, no doubt. But the winner... Great to see a strong following in Adelaide Oval from the West Coast contingent. The crowd was up and about, but so I know about some of our apparatuses that we're using. They brought cheering. everyone along. Everyone was there. We needed every, all the numbers we could get, and someone's brought, I'm bringing old Betsy Lou here. <laughs> so 